BioWare releases an emotional new 4K trailer for Mass Effect Legendary Edition, while also confirming the upcoming game's release date. On N7 Day last year, BioWare and Electronic Arts officially announced Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a collection of the original three Mass Effect games remastered for modern platforms. Now EA has released a brand new 4K trailer for Mass Effect Legendary Edition alongside its release date, letting Mass Effect fans know exactly when they can revisit these three classic sci-fi RPGs. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition release date is Friday, May 14th on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, with all three games remastered to support 4K visuals. There will be no PS5 or Xbox Series X version of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, but those that play the game on next-gen consoles will still have some perks to look forward to. What exactly those next-gen enhancements are have not been specified at the time of this writing, but presumably, those that play Mass Effect Legendary Edition on PS5 or Xbox Series X will get an added performance boost. Regardless of which platform players use to play Mass Effect Legendary Edition, the content will be the same. This includes the original Mass Effect trilogy of games, along with over 40 pieces of DLC. Besides the substantial story DLC that was released for the original Mass Effect games back in the day, this DLC includes DLC weapons, armor, and other goodies as well. It's also nice that the game now has a firm release date, so those looking forward to revisiting the original Mass Effect games with upscaled visuals know exactly when they will be able to do so. Mass Effect Legendary Edition should be a great way for fans of the franchise to tide themselves over while they wait for more information on the new Mass Effect game that's currently in development at BioWare. The new Mass Effect game was announced at the Game Awards 2020 with a trailer that confirmed little beyond that it will apparently be set in the Milky Way galaxy, like the original trilogy, and that fan-favorite character Liera T. Sony will be involved somehow. The game is in the earliest stages of development, though, so fans shouldn't expect substantial details anytime soon. If the remaster proves popular enough, it will be interesting to see if other Bioware games get a similar treatment, like the Dragon Age franchise. There have been rumors that a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic port is in the works as well, so hopefully Bioware fans will have even more classic games to play on their current-gen hardware soon. Talking about Bioware, we have to take a look on the conformation given by Bioware that Mass Effect 3S multiplayer will not be included in Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and Bioware explains why. Mass Effect Legendary Edition is shaping up to be the definitive version of Bioware's iconic sci-fi trilogy. However, it seems like fans of Mass Effect 3S multiplayer will not be getting the same love, as Bioware explains why it will not be included in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Fans speculated that Mass Effect Legendary Edition would not include Mass Effect 3S multiplayer content after the game was revealed, as Bioware made no mention of the cult classic co-op mode. Despite this lack of acknowledgement, some fans of the wave-based survival mode held onto the hope that Mass Effect Legendary Edition would still include the feature. However, in a new interview with Game Informer, Bioware developers confirmed that multiplayer would not be included in the remaster. According to environment and character director Kevin Meek and project director Mac Walters, multiplayer was simply too complicated for the team to bring back. Walters and Meek compared the process of bringing back Mass Effect 3 multiplayer to restoring an old car that was actually buried in concrete. With Bioware constantly worrying if it would be able to get the feature to work at all, and if it was even worth the time, a remaster of the multiplayer was scrapped meaning that the Mass Effect remasters will be entirely single player. In the interview, Meek and Walters explained that they believe Bioware has chosen the things that are what the majority of the fans were most passionate about. Highlighting that the project would have suffered time-wise if multiplayer was included, and resources that could have been used to improve the single-player content of Mass Effect would have needed to be spent, the decision is understandable. With questions like cross-play and post-launch support also supposedly coming up, Bioware decided that it was simply not worth the effort. Aside from multiplayer possibly being a huge road bump for the Mass Effect Legendary Edition team, another issue is that not everyone enjoyed the feature. Players who love Mass Effect purely for the single-player experience make up most of the franchise's fanbase, and a controversial decision saw Mass Effect 3S multiplayer having an impact on the single-player story's ending.
However, with no multiplayer included, the frustrating impact of online play on effective military strength will not be seen something that could actually make the lack of multiplayer a positive bit of news for some players. It seems that fans of the series multiplayer will need to continue playing Mass Effect Andromeda's online modes. While wielding bionic powers and iconic Mass Effect weaponry with friends would have been fun to do again, it makes sense that Bioware would prioritize making the single-player games as great as they can possibly be. Now we have to discuss why Mass Effect Legendary Edition isn't coming to PS5 or Xbox Series X. Bioware explains why the remaster collection Mass Effect Legendary Edition is not going to get a version for PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. With details about Mass Effect Backslash, Legendary Edition coming out, it has been confirmed that it will not be on PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. Bioware clarifies a few reasons why the new Mass Effect game is not coming to the next generation consoles. With the PS5 and Xbox Series X out now, many players are starting to make the switch. So much so that the consoles are selling at record rates and are mostly out of stock. However, it looks like Mass Effect Legendary Edition will not get a dedicated version. A remastered collection of the original three games, this edition offers a way to experience the classic series in a whole new light. But it sounds like the updates will only be going as far as what is possible on the previous generation. Fortunately, the collection will be playable on the newest consoles via forward compatibility. Bioware director Mac Walters explains that a next-gen version of the game is out of reach. With a development basis on Unreal Engine 3, the director suggests that next-gen is more than the developers could have done. Claiming that the collection is built for the new consoles could be disingenuous because of these limitations. Walters firmly denies that there will be a next-gen version or optimization patch for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That said, he does provide some information on improvements players can expect on PS5 and Xbox Series X. Some perks include faster load times and better frame rates. Resolution will be able to stay higher too, and overall it should be a more optimized experience. Therefore, despite no official update, next-gen players will have some extra benefits. Mass Effect is a series that is well known among the gaming community, even if the relatively recent Andromeda did not live up to expectations. It is good to hear that Walters does not want Mass Effect Legendary Edition to suffer from misleading promises. From the interview, it is clear that the team at Bioware has a vision for the collection, and it did not include next-gen hardware. There is little point to forcing it just for the sake of release on PS5 and Xbox Series X. Of course, some fans could see this as a downside for the remaster. It is one thing to not launch on next-gen, but another to suggest there will be no optimization patch. With other games like God of War getting a free update, certain players may wonder why Bioware cannot do this too. Nevertheless, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition will have some improvements on the new consoles that should make it worth picking up. Bioware explains that in Mass Effect Legendary Edition the first game is a partial remake, the sequels are remasters which reportedly improving the Mass Effect 1 gameplay experience and improves Mako controls. While Mass Effect Legendary Edition is bringing some major visual upgrades to the beloved trilogy of RPGs, it is also improving on several gameplay systems of the original Mass Effect game. One of the systems that the Mass Effect Legendary Edition will improve upon is the Mako vehicle, and fans could not be any happier about the news. In a post on EA's official website, several upgrades that are being made to the original game in Mass Effect Legendary Edition are highlighted. These include improvements to Mass Effect's companions, giving them better AI behavior, as well as improved aiming, cameras, and cover systems. Female Shepard will also take on her iconic look from Mass Effect 3 in the first two games. However, for many the most exciting upgrade listed is better Mako controls, as the original version of the vehicle was an absolute pain to control. While the first Mass Effect offered some top-tier gameplay when it first released, it is far outclassed by Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3, as well as other modern RPGs. While many feel that the story holds up well, just as many believe that the gameplay does not. Fortunately, that is set to change with the release of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, as several key improvements are being made to the game's core systems and gameplay mechanics.
Though the Mass Effect Legendary Edition trailer and various clips online have shown off some of the improvements to the game, there are even more that BioWare has shared with GameSpot. Beyond improved textures and 4K graphics, the first Mass Effect game will be given better aiming controls particularly when scoping in. XP has been rebalanced, allowing players to hit level 60 without entering New Game Plus. Boss fights have been improved upon as well, with players able to heal more often too. A massive improvement will see autosaves happening more frequently, something that should be reassuring to fans of the original Mass Effect. With the game being fairly difficult, dying happened often, and each failure brought back major setbacks due to the game rarely autosaving. Aside from this change, the camera system of the first Mass Effect will be improved upon, with a dedicated button for melee attacks added too. The Mako will also be improved, moving faster and controlling better with the old, bouncy physics left behind. When Mass Effect Legendary Edition arrives, players can expect to see major improvements to the AI. Enemies will be smarter and less likely to rush players, while Mass Effect's companions will follow instructions better. More cover will be added to tough fights, and broken cover points and animations will be fixed. The last major change will see Mass Effect 1's weapons rebalanced, giving each of the different guns a unique feel that was not previously seen in the game. Though BioWare is still working on the inventory system, no major changes are expected, with other minor improvements instead coming via fewer minigames and a cleaner UI. Based on all these significant changes, it seems that when players relieve their Mass Effect choices and romances, they will be doing so in the best version of the game possible. While the Mako returned in Mass Effect Andromeda with far better controls, its original appearance proved to be one of the worst aspects of the original game. While the concept of using a vehicle to explore planets was exciting, the result was a bouncy mess of a rover that was incredibly cumbersome and frustrating to pilot. Fortunately, BioWare has promised that the vehicle will be improved upon for the remaster, and Mass Effect fans have managed to get Mako trending with their excitement. As highlighted by Shinobi602, a massive Mass Effect fan and one of the insiders who teased that a Mass Effect, Legendary Edition trailer was on the way, the Mako's improvements see it getting a boost to its speed as well as better handling. Further, the physics of the vehicle have been given an upgrade, meaning that it will likely lose its infamous bounciness. As such, players can expect to crash far less often, and exploring locations in the Mako should be much faster now. Shinobi602 went on to post a series of comparison screenshots taken from EA's website, with one showing how the upgrades extend to the Mako's visual design. Clearly Mass Effect's characters and locations will not be the only things seeing some major visual improvements in the Legendary Edition, as the Mako boasts smoother textures on its wheels and exterior. The lights on the back of the vehicle also look better than they did in the original, with the game's lighting adding to the vehicle's more eye-catching appearance. While some fans have defended the Mako over the years, for most the vehicle's abundant issues were far more frustrating than charming. As such, players should have a far better time progressing through Mass Effect, with one less headache preventing them from enjoying the experience provided by the original game and the franchise. Now, we can take a look at how the Mass Effect Legendary Edition varies from the original trilogy, and the graphics comparison shows how much the visuals have improved. One of the biggest upgrades Mass Effect fans will notice in Legendary Edition is how much the graphics have improved when compared to the original games, with a recent tweet from the official Mass Effect Twitter account showing just how far the graphics have come. The tweet compares how the graphics look on Vermeer in the original Mass Effect when compared to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Players will notice that the lighting has been greatly improved in Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and the level of environmental detail also appears to have been heightened. Players will also take note of some other changes, like the new HUD in Mass Effect Legendary Edition, representing the unified HUD that players will see in all three games. One of the biggest Mass Effect choices players have to make is found on Vermeer, so it's interesting that Bioware chose that planet to compare the Mass Effect Legendary Edition graphics to the original game. It will be one of many tough choices that Mass Effect fans will have to revisit as they replay the games later this year. Mass Effect Legendary Edition's graphical upgrade is certainly one of the biggest changes in the remastered collection, but it's not the only one. The original Mass Effect game seems to have gotten the most attention, 
with BioWare tweaking the game's infamously long elevator rides as well as improving Mako controls, which should make the vehicle sections far less frustrating. Whether or not BioWare's efforts have paid off remains to be seen, but fans will find out sooner rather than later. While most of the changes will be found in the original Mass Effect, Mass Effect Legendary Edition has made some changes to the other games as well. Notably, it has a universal character creator for each entry in the trilogy, utilizing Mass Effect 3's customization options. With Mass Effect's character customization options changing vastly over the three games, it seems now players will be able to use one unified character creator for every title, focusing on the one implemented in Mass Effect 3. The biggest news from this change is that the default female Commander Shepard for Mass Effect 1 and 2 will be the one offered in Mass Effect 3, which is a big relief for those who grew frustrated with Bioware not settling on a defining female face for the character until the third game. For those who prefer to apply their own look to Commander Shepard, they can look forward to all the additional customization options added throughout the series to be included from the first game onwards. Better yet, Bioware has even added a few options to sweeten the deal. Players will now allegedly have access to a wider range of makeup, skin tones, and hairstyles, with Bioware apparently focusing on adding more hairstyles for black characters in particular. Overall, it seems like the character creator will be more consistent between games, all the while adding more options to allow players to create their perfect rendition of Commander Shepard. It will also seemingly ease some issues players had before with porting their character from Mass Effect 2 to Mass Effect 3. As for Mass Effect Legendary Edition's other changes, the game will have a significant graphical overhaul of the first Mass Effect, which fans agree has aged the worse out of the trifecta of games. The classic title will have significantly enhanced visuals, and a number of major combat changes, such as smoother aiming, more effective tactical commands, and AI that responds more realistically to combat situations. The game's autosave will also be much less temperamental, saving more frequently. Other changes to the trilogy include overhauling Mass Effect 3's Galactic Readiness feature to take into account all three games and compiling all titles into one handy new launcher. Plus we have the extended ending for Mass Effect 3 is now baked into the experience, along with the other post-launch DLC that was released for the game over the years. An interview with Mass Effect Legendary Edition's director confirms the inclusion of all DLC, including the extended cut's fourth ending. A recent IGN interview with Mass Effect Legendary Edition director Mac Walters didn't confirm the restoration of said storylines, it did reveal plenty of other details. Walters spoke on the decision to include the additional fourth ending of the trilogy, stating the decision stemmed from a desire to include as much of the DLC content as possible within the collection. Walters explains that the extended cut content provides more context around the ending, and the legendary edition should be as if players had downloaded that content from the outset. Mass Effect 3's infamous ending has been a huge point of controversy for the franchise, which led to widespread criticism. The reception was so negative at the time that the game's director publicly defended the narrative choice. The subsequent extended cut was released to add more content which, while not fundamentally changing the endings, but rather expands upon them in greater detail. However, a recent trailer for Mass Effect 4 potentially has huge implications for Mass Effect 3's ending. Additionally, Walters confirms Mass Effect Legendary Edition will also include several brand new tweaks to gameplay. The tweaks are almost entirely associated with boss fights, mostly having to do with providing players with a less frustrating experience. He gives the fight against a Seri Matriarch Benizia in the first game as an example, explaining the addition of more cover and preventing the near-instantaneous immobilization that got under the skin of many players. Walters also discusses other various, quality-of-play features, such as adding more autosave points to prevent players from having to extensively backtrack and reportedly improve Mako controls. Mass Effect Legendary Edition looks to be the quintessential experience of the Mass Effect series. While many fans are excited about the original trilogy's remaster, there are plenty of fans who want to see the story continued. Even though the series now has two sets of characters, a la the original trilogy and 2017's Mass Effect, Andromeda, Mass Effect 4 could tie the trilogy and Andromeda together with Liera and Ryder, but only time will ultimately tell. As we have seen some news and comparisons, 
Now let's take a look at the claims made by BioWare themselves for the game and its future. One of its claims is that Mass Effect Legendary Edition developers wanted to bring series to Unreal Engine 4. However, it seems as though BioWare originally intended to not only bring older Mass Effect content to modern consoles, but to upgrade the game to a brand new engine. Project director Mac Walters revealed to PC Games N during a preview event that BioWare was in talks with Epic Games about bringing Mass Effect Legendary Edition to Unreal Engine 4, the successor to the engine the original games run on. It would appear that the idea was scrapped due to the increased workload that comes with transferring between the computing languages of Unreal 3 and 4, keeping the new edition firmly in the category of remaster over remake. According to Walters, the visual scripting language used in the Unreal Engine doesn't exactly have a copy-slash-paste function, meaning that everything would have to essentially be remade from scratch. This would mean recoding every scene and moment found in the original trilogy, which may have meant fundamental changes to Mass Effect Legendary Edition from the original. As Walters puts it, the game feel would have drastically changed over the course of the type of update, essentially calling for a full remake that might give a different experience as a result of these changes. In the case of presenting Mass Effect Legendary Edition as a definitive version of the original trilogy with a fully customizable Commander Shepard, and all three games delivered in one tight package, Walters believes this to be the right call. Since the plan for this new edition was never to remake the game, but to update it for modern hardware, sticking with Unreal 3 might be the safer bet in the long run. Of course, that doesn't mean that future Mass Effect titles won't try to see what new and classic characters might look like in Unreal Engine 4 as the series moves forward. While fans would have certainly enjoyed seeing Mass Effect's Commander Shepard and their crew in Unreal 4, it's more important that BioWare is able to hold on to the game feel that made the series shine in the first place. The ways that a series like Mass Effect feels to play is an elusive target to keep track of, and if upgraded visuals might have sacrificed it, then it might not have been worth it. After all, if a fresh-faced Shepard does feel like Shepard, then it really doesn't matter how good that new coat of paint is in the long run. The next claim of BioWare is that, BioWare reveals in an interview that it's not ruling out a Switch port of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, although it won't come anytime soon. BioWare did hint that players could potentially play the game on a very different platform in the future, revealing to Eurogamer in an interview that it still hasn't entirely ruled out the idea of a Nintendo Switch port. The publication allegedly floated the idea by Mass Effect, Legendary Edition Project Director Mac Walters, who apparently didn't flat out deny the idea, but also made it clear that, right now, it isn't on the immediate agenda. Personally, I'd love it, Walters claims, but ultimately, I think we had a path set, and it was like, let's finish that, then let's see sort of where we're at. Although it's far from a confirmation, it's interesting to see that the studio hasn't completely disregarded the prospect of one day bringing the games to Nintendo's beloved console. After all, the Mass Effect games are significant RPGs that would be ideal for handheld play, with tons of fun quests to dive into and vibrant sci-fi worlds to explore. The main problem appears to be the fact that BioWare built the game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One specifically, raising textures, improving load times, and generally creating much more technically proficient games. If the trilogy does eventually grace Nintendo's console in the next few years, here's to hoping it will feature some of the upgrades Legendary Edition purchasers are currently looking forward to experiencing on PC and consoles. As for the remaster itself, the bundle will package together all three Mass Effect games and over 40 DLCs. It will also smooth out several of the biggest criticisms levied against the series, including improving the first Mass Effect's shooting mechanics, reducing Citadel elevator load times, and offering Mass Effect 3's character creator for Mass Effect 1 and 2. The latter will even make it so the third game's default female Commander Shepard becomes the standard model for the trilogy, which wasn't the case originally. It will seemingly provide a comprehensive Mass Effect collection for fans to play while they wait for the next iteration of the franchise, which BioWare formally announced back at the Game Awards. And the final claim is that, BioWare confirms it will be working alongside Mass Effect's modding community to ensure a smooth transition to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. As has become the question with every significant remaster, 
PC fans are already worrying about what will happen to the array of mods available for the Mass Effect trilogy upon the release of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Much like when Bethesda released its Skyrim Special Edition, or when From Software dropped Dark Souls Remaster, revamped versions of old games often mess with the years of mods fans have accumulated, leading PC players to not make the leap to the remastered copy as a result. It seems BioWare has already considered the modding communities who've spent years crafting additional content for all three Mass Effect games, revealing today that plans are being worked on to ensure the jump to Mass Effect Legendary Edition is smoother than some might expect. Discussing the concept with a fan who claimed they wouldn't pre-order the game due to the lack of mods, project lead on the remaster, Mac Walter, confirmed that BioWare is working with the modding community to keep them informed about compatibility with the Legendary Edition. We have been in touch with a few in the modding community, Walter states, even clarifying exactly what he hopes to achieve through collaborating with modders. According to the project director, the aim is to update everyone on changes that will impact existing mods, and set the modding community up for success going forward. He teases that players can expect to hear more about the changes to modding closer to release, likely after Bioware has ironed out some firmer plans. Seeing as integrating previous mods is often not a focal point of remasters, the open dialogue has already garnered a lot of favor among Mass Effect's PC audience. Clearly, Bioware wants this to be the definitive way to play all three sci-fi RPG classics, and ensuring the trilogy's range of fan-made content is accessible is included in that promise. As for how it intends to make mods compatible in the face of such drastic changes to the game remains to be seen, but many will be glad to know it's something Bioware is taking into account. As a fan of the Mass Effect world, here are some of my speculations and improvements to be made for the game. At first we have none other than romance. One thing Mass Effect Legendary Edition should change but won't. Bioware has long been lauded for its creative storytelling, immersive environments, and romance stories that stick with players long after the game has ended. The issue for the most part doesn't lie in the storytelling itself, but rather who the romanceable options are throughout the three games. Mass Effect Legendary Edition could have expanded the romance options for each Commander Shepard, especially in light of the recent news of the censorship during the initial development, but chose not to. February is Creative Romance Month, the perfect time to recount Mass Effect, Legendary Edition's best romances, including Jack's sincere story. Jack's growth as a character, seen by players through the eyes of Shepard, is what makes her not only a fan-favorite character, but a top-tier romance as well. The night before the suicide mission, Jack unexpectedly comes to Shepard and tells him that he was right, and that maybe she does need someone. She'll cry, which is heartbreaking for players to see and yet necessary for Jack's character development, as Shepard will comfort her and have a moment that's more than a fling of her past. Shepard and Jack's romance doesn't have to end in Mass Effect 3, though they don't have as many moments together as other romantic choices. Players who choose to continue to romance Jack in Mass Effect 3 will still see some sincere scenes between the two of them, but nowhere near as extensive as Mass Effect 2. Despite this, it's clear that Jack cares deeply for Shepard, even if it's hidden behind sex jokes. With the release of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right around the corner, players will have tons of moments to look forward to revisiting Jack and Shepard's groundbreaking, sincere love story. And other such as improvement in the combat system, elevator load times, and some improvements in visuals. Finally, after taking an in-depth analysis of the Legendary Edition, I shortlisted the top 10 major changes Mass Effect Legendary Edition is making. But before jumping into the main list I need to show you the Collector's Edition special of the game. Anyone that wants to purchase the base game will be out $59.99, but like with most big game releases, a Collector's Edition is also available. Mass Effect Legendary Edition CE is $149.99, and while it has some impressive goodies, it doesn't actually come with the game. This is a common trend of recent Collector's Editions as of late, so it's quite likely that many Mass Effect Legendary Edition fans won't be bothered by this exclusion. Regardless, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition CE, called the Legendary Cache by BioWare, does come with a metal case for players to store their game in if they decide to pick up the physical version. 
It also includes a morality spinner pin, an N7 acceptance letter too, canvas art prints, and a custom box to store it all. The Mass Effect art prints appear to be based on the Mass Effect 3 female shepherd key art, American Samoa well as the franchise's iconic Normandy ship. The morality spinner pin, meanwhile, is a pin that features the Paragon and Renegade icons on each side. For those that haven't played Mass Effect recently, players are labeled Paragons if they do good actions, whereas Renegade was the label assigned to those who made bad choices in the game. The real star of the Mass Effect legendary cache is the one is to one scale replica of an N7 helmet. More than a simple decoration, the N7 helmet can actually be worn. It also lights up and is accurate to how it appears in the Mass Effect games. Needless to say, it's likely going to become a hot collector's item for fans of the Mass Effect franchise. Those interested in the Mass Effect legendary cache should make sure to pre-order as soon as possible, as it's likely going to be available in limited supply. Anyone that does so will also need to make a separate pre-order for the actual Mass Effect Legendary Edition game, as remember, it's not included in the Legendary Cache. Those that do pre-order should still expect the Legendary Cache to arrive on May 14th, alongside the Mass Effect Legendary Edition game launch. Now, let's jump into our final content. 10 Major Changes Mass Effect Legendary Edition is Making Number 10 Graphics all the titles are receiving a notable graphical overhaul. They won't look like PS5 games, but more in the vein of them looking the way players remember. The debut title receives the biggest advantages. Initially released in 2007, Mass Effect certainly shows its age as an early Xbox 360 title. Looking at side-by-side -side comparisons of the original and new version, the upgraded visuals are simply breathtaking. This alone is enough work for a new release, but BioWare did not stop at visuals. Number 9 Elevator Load Times One infamous aspect of the games are the hidden load times disguised by elevators. It was the best developers could do on the PS3 and Xbox 360, but almost a decade after the trilogy's conclusion and BioWare now has the ability to load environments at lightning speeds. The conversations and moments which used to occupy these infamous elevator rides now trigger faster and are sped up to still achieve their purpose within the narrative. BioWare developers recently confirmed the iconic elevator sequences from the first Mass Effect were changed for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. BioWare's Mac Walters and Kevin Meek spoke to Game Informer about some of the details that will be changed for the remaster, including shortening the elevator rides for players that way players don't have to wait as long as they did in the original Mass Effect this time around. In the interview, Walters and Meek both talk about some of the changes BioWare is making to improve the games for the remaster, including improvements to the first Mass Effect's gameplay experience. The developer was able to cut the load time for Mass Effect's elevator rides from the original's 1-minute ride down to 14 seconds in the Legendary Edition. This raised the question of whether or not the shortened elevator rides will remove the squad banter players enjoyed from the game too. According to the developers, squad mates will still have their memorable banter in the elevator rides. Instead of waiting a minute for the banter to kick in, the Mass Effect squad members will have their dialogue start earlier once they enter the elevator. The same applies to news broadcast clips that normally played on elevator rides at the Citadel in the first game. Meek said that these moments will trigger faster than before, and players will also have the option to either let the squad banter and news feed play out or just skip them altogether. This way, players have the choice of either enjoying the elevator ride or just skipping it to get right to their destination. Meek said that the elevator ride's load times will vary depending on the hard drive players are using for their PCs and consoles while playing the Legendary Edition. However, while the Legendary Edition won't be released on next-gen, the console's forward compatibility may come in handy to provide a more optimized experience to go with the elevator ride's faster load times. However, based on this change Mass Effect fans will have the benefits of the squad banter and shorter load times in the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Number 8 Ultra Wide Support This one is for the PC players. Mass Effect Legendary Edition will support ultra wide monitors for a whopping 21:9 aspect ratio. This is a common option with modern games, so it is great to see older titles receive similar support. 
Mass Effect is a science fiction epic on par with the best Star Trek stories, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Star Wars, so playing it in this unique aspect ratio will provide a more cinematic experience. Number 7-4K Quality Across All Platforms In addition to improvements to graphical fidelity, resolution will also receive a huge boost. First-run Xbox 360s did not even have HDMI cable ports, so playing the debut entry in 4K resolution will be a revelation for those who played it all the way back in 2007. Not everybody can take advantage of this at the moment, but as time goes on, 4K televisions will become steadily more affordable, making it into more and more homes. Number 6 Improved Universal Character Creator As I mentioned above, the character creator also sees significant improvement in several areas. For one, all options from Mass Effect 3 are now on the Mass Effect, preventing the issue of odd-looking shepherds and the necessity of slightly changing their look from title to title. There are also additional options for those looking to create a shepherd of a different race. Lack of black hairstyles is a problem in most games' character creators, so it is nice to see Bioware address this. Number 5 No Aiming Penalties on Class in the Mass Effect Many of the changes to the first game aim to bring it a little closer in feeling to Mass Effect 2, while still maintaining its unique identity. The debut entry feels more like an RPG with shooter elements rather than vice versa like the next two games. One way to remedy this difference is removing aiming penalties for not having mastery in certain weapons based on class. Weapons restrictions are also taken out entirely, meaning every class can use every weapon. Number 4 Different HUD Mass Effect is also receiving a makeover in the UI to make it more similar to Mass Effect 2. In the debut entry, Bioware was still figuring out what the series would be, so not all of the design practices stuck throughout the rest of the trilogy. Now that it has a second crack at the 2007 game, the developer is making the UI and HUD the way it wants in order for Legendary Edition to feel like a coherent package. Number 3 The Mako is a much smoother ride. As we have discussed above, the Mako is one of the most infamous parts of Mass Effect. It was thankfully removed in the sequels, though mining for resources in Mass Effect 2 was not exactly a party either. Legendary Edition is not removing these sections, opting to maintain a faithful experience, but Bioware is significantly tweaking several aspects of the Mako to make it a smoother ride. Driving controls and handling are improved. The camera is also seeing major improvements, making the transition between walking and driving less jarring. The re-entry of Mako with major improvements can be a treat. Number 2 Pinnacle Station DLC Mass Effect Legendary Edition is also receiving all the DLC packages from the trilogy except one. Unfortunately, the Pinnacle Station expansion from the debut entry is only available on the original Xbox 360 release and the PC versions. The code was corrupted and unusable, causing it to be unusable for both the PS3 release and the upcoming Legendary Edition. It is far from the most beloved DLC, but one cannot help but feel sad at its exclusion. Back in the day, Pinnacle Station served as an exciting way to hone combat skills aboard a top-secret Alliance space station, including 13 combat scenarios and a whole new location to explore. It would have made a nice addition to the Legendary Edition, but Bioware hit a roadblock during development, developers were unable to get a hold of the source code for the DLC. Game director Mac Walters told Game Informer about the ordeal, explaining that another studio, Demiurge, actually made Pinnacle Station, and when Bioware tried to recover the code, its data was almost entirely corrupted even vital links were missing. Walters elaborated, saying that to include Pinnacle Station in the Legendary Edition, the studio would have essentially had to build it from scratch all over again, adding roughly six months to the development process. Given all that, it seems like the exclusion of Pinnacle Station was more or less beyond Bioware's control. The decision was a difficult one, but delaying the release of the Legendary Edition over non-essential DLC ultimately doesn't make sense. Despite hopes that the Legendary Edition would include all DLC, fans will have to content themselves with the 40-plus DLC that will be included, and really, that should be enough. Pinnacle Station isn't the only piece of content left on the cutting room floor, either. Bioware also decided to cut Mass Effect 3's multiplayer element, deeming it too complicated to add to the remaster. 
Despite the loss of Pinnacle Station, it is not considered an essential DLC, by a long shot, unlike other pieces of DLC included in the Mass Effect remaster such as Citadel and Leviathan, or squad members Kasumi and Zaid in Mass Effect 2. It's a small loss to get the game that much sooner, and fans will likely understand why the decision had to be made. Number 1 Multiplayer is no longer mandatory. Mass Effect 3's multiplayer mode was essential to obtaining the game's best ending. It was a polarizing feature. BioWare considered adding it in, but ultimately opted to leave it out of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, making the package a purely single-player experience. Several factors went into this decision, including considering Mass Effect 3's continued online functionality on PS3 and Xbox 360. Fortunately, those who really want to play still have options. Number 0 Changes to Some Gratuitous Camera Shots Another area getting revamped by Bioware is camera angles, with a specific focus on how Mass Effect presented women. In an interview with Metro, character and environment director Kevin Meek talked about some of the limitations that are part of updating the Mass Effect, Legendary Edition. Meek explains that the team was restrained in what it could change with regards to animations. However, what it could do was change how the camera was positioned to better represent animations. These changes to the camera are particularly of use with regards to Female Shepard, according to Meek. And not just in one Mass Effect game, but across the entire trilogy. Bioware apparently made several such small changes, so that Female Shepard was a bit more on par with Male Shepard. Examples of changes that Bioware made to this effect include subtle face shape changes, as well as some wrinkles or support so that Shepard's face better caught light to a similar degree to how male Shepard's face does. Another subject area was also addressed in these updates to the Mass Effect trilogy. That being how Mass Effect had many camera shots that would overtly sexualize certain characters. Meek explains how, as an example, one camera shot prompted him to ask, why was that focusing on Miranda's butt? In certain cases, Meek says that the team decided to make a change. The exact goal of these changes and how wide-reaching isn't clear, but the general idea makes sense. Meek was also asked about the possibility of Mass Effect 3's ending being changed with the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, as well as how Bioware approached the issue, or if it looked at it as an issue at all. Meek says that the team put all options on the table to start with, but there doesn't seem to be any serious thought put into Mass Effect 3's ending. The goal, says Meek, is to re-release Mass Effect as what people remember it to be. The Mass Effect 3 ending is certainly a part of that. From the sound of it, these small changes being made by Meek and the team at Bioware are unlikely to even be noticeable by the average player. The game will look better due to a variety of visual enhancements, but it won't look like a different experience. That way, Mass Effect players can focus on reliving the classic sci-fi RPG series as they see fit. And that's all for the video, if you enjoyed the video give it a like, and if you are interested in my contents, subscribe to the channel and click the notification icon for more interesting and informative topics, and follow me on Twitter for more gaming news. And until then, goodbye. Mass Effect Legendary Edition releases on PC, PS4, and Xbox One on May 14th.